Hey guys, so Sarah here at Fisher Price Ranch, and today I thought I would go over my medical kit, my birthing kit, um, how I keep track of all my information on my goats, and uh, Excel spreadsheets, that kind of thing. So this is my office, and on one wall we keep a giant whiteboard with all of the goat information and my schedule, my head count, things like that. So every day, every morning and every night, I do a head count just to make sure all the goats are fine, nobody's hurt or missing or anything like that. And then I have just kind of my feeding schedule, you know, fill up the feeders, what the dogs get. This is in case I have somebody here um, if I'm gone. And then my projects um, and then the goats that I have for sale and then emergency contact. <laughs> And then I have all of my goats. This is for my breeding. So I keep all my all my does listed, when they're bred, who they're bred with, their due date when they actually kid, how many they have, and then their class. Ignore my bills. <laughs> and uh, so here at my desk, <clears throat> I keep uh, my notebook and... In here we have, you know, my income and expenses that I started the first of the year. This has to do with just the goats in general and the livestock guardian dogs because they protect the goats. So any investment um, that I have with the, with the goats and everything involved goes on here. Business cards. Um, so right away I have my emergency information. This is for if I'm not home and like Brandon's here and there's an issue with the goats. Um, I have like all the different diseases that could happen, um, what to give them and how often. And then all my medications that I keep on hand and the dosage route and how often on there. So this I printed off of... Um, one of my goat groups that I'm on, it's the emergency goat, um, and they they made all these, and so I have them printed in my book, so it's a quick, you know, I can get to it really fast, and if, like I said, I'm not here, Brandon can get to it, um, so basic goat assessment, um, warming a cold goat, hypoglycemia and milk fever, Pregnancy toxemia and ketosis, anemia treatment, and the famancha, which I need to get this printed in color, would make it a little easier. Um, pneumonia, bottle feeding, which I don't typically keep bottle babies. If something happens where I have a bottle baby, I just sell it. I don't have the time because I do work full time. Um, bloat treatment, coccidia treatment, any poisoning and polio, urinary calcica, mice and lights, <laughs> mites and lice. <laughs> we we don't have a mice problem because we have uh, our goats or our uh, barn cats. Um, CD antitoxin and things like that. And then after that, I keep all my pedigrees on my goats. We'll just kind of skip through that. They're all the same. Those are all my girls. And then I have one goat that's just a commercial. She's a mixed breed, so I just keep everything on here. And then all my boys. All right. And then my my spreadsheets that I actually made. So this is when we did our goat roundup. We do this every six months. So our next one will be in March, so we'll film that. But it's every single goat on the farm. Um, their ear tag. And then we go over each goat. We go over their famancha, their copper how their hooves look, their weight, and their height. And we do that with every goat every six months. And then I score them depending on how I feel their quality is. And then this one, we have, this is what I keep track, every single goat that passes through my farm, whether it's temporarily or, you know, whatever. And then I write if they're sold or traded, if they're a breeder, that kind of thing. Um, so I keep their name, their breed, birthday, sex, farm tag, uh, which is um, their, like a flock ID, and then their ear tag number, registration number, color, how much they cost me, um, if they were born or if I traded for them, 
uh, what I paid. Um, as you can see, I don't typically buy cheap goats. Um, sometimes I get lucky. Um, and then, of course, their status. And, uh, like, these ones were just born. Those are the last ones I entered. So, like, if down the road um, I had sold Buck, and then a couple years down the road I had its offspring, and then I forgot what his registration number was, I can go back in here and I have it. Um, many years I forgot what color he was, whatever. It's all in here. This is my personal farm tag registration that I do. Um, so I have my flock ID, which is issued through the state, and then I have it by ear tag number, and then who it is, uh, their sex, class, and their sire and dam. That's for me. Same thing if I sell, if I sell a goat down the road, um, many, many years, somebody can, which I've done, somebody can track their ear tag back to me and I can tell them more information in case papers were lost or something like that. I've been able to do that with quite a few of my goats that I purchased, and I was able to track them back to their original farm and found papers because they had been lost. So that's really nice to have. Um, this is when I have kids born. I keep a lot of the same information as you can see, um, depending on what this is about. So this one's a kid's weight chart. So this is what they're all born at. And then I weigh them every 30 days and then get their average daily gain after 90 days. And this is kind of helps you decide who you want to keep and who you don't want to keep, what's not worth even selling as breeders, that kind of thing. Um, you can see last year was my first real year of doing Kiko goats. And so you can see my average daily wasn't too bad, 0.35 to 0.4. I had a couple real low ones, um, but those were out of some of my smaller goats, and I've actually sold most of those. But I think I did pretty good. Um, for it being my first year and uh, so this year I think we'll do a lot better now that we've purchased more quality goats <clears throat> one of my next videos I'll go over what I look for in quality these are just my breeding notes um, just kind of what happened I've had some that didn't settle um, or they've had a miscarriage things like that and I keep track in case it happens every year it'll tell me if I need to um, go ahead and cull that doe out of my herd if she's having continuous issues. Um, this one's kind of the same thing, um, you know, the doe who, who was bred, and then I'm keeping track of their age, how many times they've freshened, and then their weight when they were bred, and uh, how many kids they have, and then of course the weaning weight, which last year I didn't do that. I went ahead and wrote all this information in, so I had it, but... Um, this year we'll be able to fill in more of this stuff. And then what their famancha was. Now, I don't, I think I should have redone the famancha. This is when we did our goat roundup. And it was a couple months um, before we bred. So this really isn't accurate. I should have done a little better with this one. Um, so I think next year we'll do, I'll be more specific on this. And I'll actually, when I write this in, when they're bred, I'll actually go out and check them instead of going by what I had already written down a few months prior. Now, um, we copper bolus our goats, and uh, I w it, they were really due for copper. I, I should have had it done a little bit sooner, and that's why their fromancha was a little high. But now, we don't um, give any... Um, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank. We don't um, give them anything for worms, we just give them copper. And uh, so far it's worked well for us. We are kind of currently dry lot still, but this year, like I said in my previous video, we will be having pasture. So I'm going to keep a closer closer eye on their famancha. So kidding notes. Um, this, or, yeah, when they kid. So same thing, buck and, buck and doe. Um, went how, how far out that their udder actually formed, started forming, that I noticed. Um, how long they were actually in labor from the very first push until all the babies were out. And that helps me in case it changes, you know, like in my previous one, um, for instance, Mama, uh, her registered name is Beauty, she had issues with her labor and she was an hour. And last year she had a little bit of issue, but it wasn't as much. So when I knew that she was taking a lot longer than last year, I knew something was wrong. And then I keep track if we had any kidding issues and what it was, you know. So, 
Um, I like to see if it changes throughout the each year that they're bred and when they give birth. Um, now this one, this is kind of more for me. Um, so 2019, the does, who they were bred with, how many kids they had, what their actual total kids weight was at weaning time, that the total of them all added up together, and how long they were pregnant for. I wanted to see if it changed at all from last year to this year, which I did have a couple, but most of them seem to be right about on time. And then the time of day, I wanted to see if that changed. So this is kind of just my own personal um, test that I'm doing just to see if it makes a difference. And then we did the bucks, um, kind of the same thing, which bucks we used last year, and what who their sire and dam is, their weight, and how many kids they had total for that kidding season, and then um, their total kids weight on what they produced, and then the amount of actual weight I got out of kids in the spring. So, um, some of this is just for me. And then I have a waiting list, of course, for people. And then I have all of my test results here. We disease test our goats every year, which we are due to do that pretty soon here. Um... We'll go over more of the disease testing and, and why to do it when we get to that point. But um, we try and keep, you know, a clean herd. I know it's not 100%, but it makes me feel better knowing that when I tested, everybody was good. And then we just keep all of our um, extra forms in the back here for the NKR. And then these are my pedigrees for my dogs. Um purchase contract, and that's it. Alright, so now we will go over my kidding kit. This is what I have on hand when babies are being born. Now I purchased this little bucket at the dollar store, and it's got handles, and it has everything that I need in here. Now of course we keep towels, because as you see in my videos, I clean the goat's nose when they come out. If it's really cold, I'll help dry them off. Um, and then we have our ear tagger and our ear tags. Keep track of when they're born, and I kind of try and keep that in order. And then I have my little goat bag, and uh, we use that to put the babies in and weigh them. We just use a fish scale when they're small. <clears throat> when they're older, I purchased this hanging scale, and it goes up to like 1,100 pounds. So we put them in a little sling and then hang them on that. And then for this winter, because it's been negative degrees, we kept, I've been keeping a hair dryer so it can dry the ears so that the ears do not freeze and get um, frostbite and fall off. Um, we keep gloves, molasses. If the doe had a hard labor, we'll give them some of that in water. Um, I didn't use any of my iodine this year. Uh, we, normally you want to dip the umbilical cord in iodine. Um, we try and keep it as natural as possible here. And so I, I actually didn't even use it. I kept a thermometer. And then, you know, if we have an umbilical cord get broken too high up, we'll, we'll clamp it. Which I haven't had that issue yet. Um, Tums in case the, the goat mama needs some extra calcium. If the babies come out. Because um, we are deficient in a lot here in Arizona, I keep selenium and vitamin E. And then if the umbilical cord is really long, well, I got scissors in here. So that's all that I keep on hand for my birthing kit. It's kind of a birthing and after birthing kit. Because I have all my scales and, and uh, ear tagger and things like that. But it's just quick and handy with handles. And I can just easily grab it and run out the door. Sometimes I get too excited and I forget to grab it. I have to come back in. <laughs> so, anyway, so that's my birthing kit. Now, this is my medical kit. This is on wheels. Uh, got it at, well, for Christmas last year from Brandon. Uh, I think he got it at Harbor Freight. And it's on wheels, so I can easily wheel it around. I have a lot of people call me if they're having issues with their goats. So I can just grab it and go and take my entire kit with me. Um... We've had a lot of a lot of broken legs last year with other people, so I had to help do that. And uh, 
all sorts of things. So anyway, we'll go over this. So my top one I keep as my quick handy stuff. Um, it's got all my needles and syringes and things like that. I have my goat tape so I can kind of measure them. Um, more needles. And we have our red vials if we need to draw blood. Uh, you want the red top tubes. If you're going to send them to the lab, that's what they require. I have my hoof trimmers. Um, my hoof pick with a little brush on it. And I have a Sharpie in here. You never know when you need to write something down. Another thermometer. We have our ketosis strips. And then... Get that out of the way. Um, oh, for eye drops. In case there's an eye infection or something. And then we had one bout of pink eye in one of my bucklings last year. And uh, this actually got it when my buck rammed me into roofing metal. So it's like a super glue medical grade. So I went ahead and just threw that in there. <laughs> and then uh, I have like my probiotics. I keep these on hand all the time. Uh, Jumpstart. And then this is baking soda. And then we have our drenching gun. That's all of our quick accessible stuff. And I love how everything kind of sticks together. But these little things here, you just pop out on both sides. And then you can just grab this whole thing and take it off. They lock together so nothing falls when you're moving the whole kit. So this next one is kind of more of my surgical supplies. Um, we don't have a vet very close. It's at least an hour drive if he's available. So I do most everything myself. Um, so these medications I ordered off of racehorsemeds.com. And uh, this is actually a sedative. I haven't used it yet. I'm a little nervous to use it because I've never used it. So, um, but if I have to sedate a goat, you know, I will. Um, we have vitamin C for in case of any problems, you know, during labor, things like that. We have dexamethasone. And then I keep thymine on hand. Um, we keep loose minerals out. So I haven't had any issues with polio anymore. My very first goat, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know any better. And we lost one to polio. So now I just keep that on hand. I've actually only used it for other people. Um, also first time goat owners. So then we got more gloves. Um, I have scalpels in here. Single, single use scalpels. Um, I try and keep everything packaged um, so they stay clean. Uh, these are all my hemos if we need to you know, pinch anything, keep it from bleeding. I've got my sutures. Um, and then I got my Clinixin, which is a generic banamine. You can get that at Racehorse Meds. It's like only like 25 bucks, 23 bucks. Um, I've got tape, <clears throat> pens if I need to write anything down. And then this little thing comes out. I've got more syringes. And then I have more of the red top tubes for when we draw blood. I have goat electrolytes. Um, I've had this from when I had a lot of chickens. I just have it left over. I don't use it. We've got LA-200. I stocked up on that before they got rid of all the antibiotics in the store. And then some of this stuff I just ended up getting. So a wound and skin care spray. I've got Tylen-200. Um, this is MFO solution, another calcium for if there's an issue during labor. Um, I have one doe. She's actually my only goat that's not a Kiko. And she will bag up right during labor. And she fills up so fast that I worry that she will get like milk fever. And so I keep this on hand mainly just for her. Um, I've got Betadine. Unfortunately, my hearing is bad, so this doesn't work for me. But I have it just in case. You never know. <laughs> I've got more selenium. And then I use this on a goat. Um, two years ago, I used a turkey baster because um, my drench gun, I was trying to drench her food, so we bought some horse pellets, and we softened them in water, so it was more like a paste, and it wouldn't go through the drench gun, but she was losing a lot of weight, 
Um, so I bought this and cut the tip off, and I was able to get food down her, and she made it. She was fine after that. We don't really know what caused her to be sick. Everything else was normal. Uh, we still don't know to this day, but uh, she's fine now, so that's good. Uh, that's for my barn cat's cat warmer. Um, I always had this on hand when I when I owned rabbits. I used to raise show rabbits, and if they got bloated, we used gas drops. And so I had these on hand, and uh, I actually, one of my bucklings a year ago got bloated, and uh, we gave them, him this, and it actually, it helped. So um, baking soda works as well. Um, I use that on one of my adult goats. She got bloated really bad. Um, we got uh, too hot of alfalfa, and she bloated really, really bad. So we gave her the baking soda, and she, within half an hour, she was back to normal. So I keep both on hand. And then we have, whoa, goodness, we have our vitamin B complex. This is, this will save your goat's life. Uh, this stuff is, I always have it on hand. I always keep big bottles. Even if they don't need it, it it's not going to hurt them. So, keep this on hand. This stuff is amazing. Anytime they're down, any something's wrong, that stuff is my go-to. Um, whoops. Goodness, I'm having the case of the dropsies here. Um, so I have my kaolin pectin. One of our bucks we had transported from Missouri last year. Um, was it last year? I think it was last year. Anyway, um, he actually got shipping fever. We almost lost him. And... Even though we kept him going, he always had the runs, and so we did this, and it worked so fast for him. And I believe this is what saved his life, because <clears throat> he kept getting really dehydrated from having the loose stool, and this got him back up to pellets really quick. We had tried everything else before that, so that I definitely keep. And then goat nutri drench. Some of this stuff is when I had dairy goats. They're not as hardy as the Kikos, so I have a lot of this stuff was mainly when I had dairy goats. And, uh, I don't, I actually rarely use any of this. We haven't really had to use antibiotics much or anything. And so, this is mainly just stuff that I keep on hand just in case. But I don't really use it that often. I missed one thing in here. Um, this is a salve that I actually made myself. And, uh, it's got uh, quite a bit of stuff in there. It has willow, which is a natural pain reliever. It has comfrey, which is fast healing. It's got mint, which is a cooling. Um, it has some ginger, a couple other things in here. It's a multi-purpose salve that I made, and it is amazing. I, I've had, I've given it a lot of it away, actually, for people. And, like, a friend of mine, her cat actually had mastitis in her, in her nipple, or, you know, her teats. And, uh, she, uh, I gave this to her for her back. Her, my friend actually hurt her back, and so she was putting it on her back, and the cat came over and was just, like, licking it like crazy. So she went ahead and rubbed some on her teats, and uh, the next morning it was gone. She was fully healed. Um, so that's just one of the instances. I love this stuff. I actually have more in the making, but uh, I keep that in my goat kit because, hey, why not? You never know when I might need it. Um... So my bottom piece here is more my bigger stuff. So this is our sling. Uh, well, it's not a sling. It's like a carrying sling, I guess. Um, for if I have a, d a downed goat, we could just put it in here. And a couple people can carry the goat up to the house. Oops. And then we have more syringes. I keep a lot of syringes because when we draw blood, we have to use one for each goat, and I have a lot, so. Uh, we have our microchips. I ordered these off of, I believe it was eBay. I love eBay. <laughs> uh, could have been another one of those sites, but. Uh, we keep a couple cotton rolls. These are for when a goat breaks a leg. Um, nice thick paper towels. Never know. This is our microchip reader. Keep that in here. And then we have more microchips, um, more needles, extra piece of cotton. Um, I ended 
ended up getting this. I'm actually not quite sure. Okay, it looks like for broken legs and stuff, too. Anyway, I got... Okay, so it's a splint. Some of the stuff I got a whole box of things, and it was just in there. I haven't even really gone through it. I have my bander for when we band the boys that don't make the cut. And all my bands, of course. And then I've got, like, my vet wrap. Um, ice pack. These are extra tags, which I don't... I've never used them. They came in another box of stuff. More tags. Um, two more taggers. I'm actually going to just sell all this because I really don't need it. And then... More gloves. And then... We have our other cotton roll. So that's kind of what we keep in our in our goat emergency kit. And uh, I have a lot more than most people do because how far out I am in our vet situation. But uh, I'd rather be more prepared than I have to be. So anyway, I hope this helps. And... Uh, you guys have any more ideas on on videos that are informative you just let me know if you can please subscribe to our channel and uh, we'll keep posting thank you